few minutes and write a letter to whatever the loss is. Write a letter to another person, write a letter to a part of yourself, write a letter to yourself at a particular age, whatever that letter is. I think most of you are knowing it. Start dear and fill the page, about one page, and end it at the end. People carry these deep wounds that they can't move past, resentments towards someone that they can't let go of, guilt about things that they have done that keep them feeling bad about themselves. Forgiveness offers a way out of that endless recycling of pain. Forgiveness, along with gratitude, help to make recovery sustainable and resilient. Forgiveness is a process, not an event. It happens in stages, and it doesn't necessarily happen once and for all. We may forgive and still have hurt or angry feelings come up. It's natural. The idea is just to continue to move in that direction a day at a time, knowing that if we don't, we're going to miss out on some of our own inner peace and joy. A lot of people have myths and mistaken beliefs around forgiveness that keep them stuck and unable to consider forgiving as an alternative. Some of those myths are, if I forgive, my relationship with the person I'm forgiving will definitely improve. Not necessarily. We may not even choose to continue to see this other person, and they may not be able to accept our forgiveness or even care about it. If I forgive, it means I'm condoning the behavior of the person I'm forgiving. Not at all. In fact, quite the opposite. Forgiveness implies a clear-headed recognition that we don't condone the behavior that we're forgiving. That's why we need to forgive it. If I forgive, I'll no longer feel angry at the person for what happened. In my experience, anger can still come up, but when it does, we remind ourselves that we've decided it isn't worth it to hold on to it any longer. If I forgive, I forgo my right to hurt feelings. We may still have some residue of hurt feelings. Forgiveness, as we've said, is a process and not an event. Hurt feelings should diminish over time, but they may not disappear all at once. If I forgive, it means I want to continue to have a relationship with the person I'm forgiving. Not necessarily. You're forgiving for your own inner growth and freedom, which is virtually always a desirable thing to do. However, reconnecting or staying connected may or may not be desirable, depending on the situation. If I haven't forgotten, I haven't really forgiven. We do and should remember, after all, just because we're forgiving doesn't mean we want to set ourselves up for further hurt. It's more like we forgive and get out of the way. We forgive and set boundaries. We forgive and see more clearly where we need to protect ourselves. I only need to forgive once. Forgiveness is a decision to head in a certain direction. We may need to forgive many times over and over again, not seven, but 70 times seven. I forgive for the sake of the other person. No, we forgive to free ourselves. We forgive so that we can stop defining our future actions based on our own or someone else's wrongful actions. Forgiving myself is selfish or wrong. As long as we look squarely at ourselves and recognize what we may be doing to add a problematic situation, as long as we look squarely at ourselves and recognize what we may be doing to add to a problematic situation, forgiving ourselves is a way of releasing both parties from the kind of shame that keeps us locked in self-defeating and negative patterns of relating. Every music performance, dance performance, basketball game, softball game, 
gymnastic show and theater performance from the time I was five until I was 17. You agonized over my troubles at school, and you didn't know how to help me fix it, how to teach me to make friends. But you hung in there with me and held me for seven years, until I finally made friends in junior high. You sewed my clothes and taught me to sew beautifully. You taught me to cook. You taught me to care about how I look and about making a good impression. You taught me to be loyal, to put family first, and to go to church. You taught me to be proud of my achievements. Not once did you ever imply that just because I was a girl, I should shoot for less in my schooling and my career. You let me leave the house and never told me that dad hit you twice after I moved out. You turned down my heartfelt request. I begged you, really, to not, for me not to go away to school and to live with you if you just divorced dad. You could not save yourself. You just didn't know how. But you had to choose me. All these years, I didn't see it that way because your unhappiness was all I needed to lure me back and fill me with guilt for leaving. But you really never did expect me to fix it for you or to sacrifice my life for you. You didn't know and you still don't know that your very presence is so powerful, that I experienced your pain as a call to action, that you were not good at hiding your pain. You didn't know that. It took me 35 years, maybe 40, to stand up in psychodrama and scream, if I have to choose between you and me, I choose me. What I never experienced was the devil in you that would have shouted back, I choose you too. I didn't want you to choose me. I longed for you to choose yourself. That would have freed me up to choose me without the guilt. But I've decided to accept what you have to give. If you choose me, then so be it. I'll let you do that, and I'll still choose me too. I don't admire that in you. I don't wish it for myself. I don't want to be like that. But I accept it. You gave me what you could as a mother. It was a lot more. I've always said it wasn't enough, but it was enough. It's what got me here. <laughs>